the dead will heal, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child you're holding is the great, the great I am. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship at St. Paul's. We are so glad to have you gathered together here in this new year at the beginning of a new season, the season of Epiphany, the time where we see Jesus revealed to be our Savior. During this season, we are having a special sermon series called Next 100, focused on the mission of the church. At the end of this month, we're going to be doing, um, and we'll be talking about it a little bit throughout the month, doing a special appeal to work on just paying off our mortgage so that we can do even more ministry. But what kind of ministry does a church do? What is the mission of the church? What has Jesus called the church to do? Throughout the season of Epiphany, we'll look at four aspects of the mission of the church. Worship, getting filled up and fueled up by God and his word. Christian education, learning that word and applying it to our lives. Outreach, evangelism, sharing the word with others. And then service, both with our, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Today on this Sunday, which or well, weekend, Saturday, today, it's also the baptism of our Lord, a special festival time when we look at baptism and how Jesus was, was baptized as he began his public ministry. And that's one of the aspects of worship, too, that we gather together around the word and sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. We have all of those today. What a wonderful thing. Uh, we're glad to worship here together. Welcome to those who are worshiping online with us, too. I would invite you to please stand as we begin our worship together, if you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Baptized into your name, most holy, O Father, Son, and and lowly among your saints your chosen host buried with Christ and dead to sin your spirit now shall live within I tell you the truth no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit Surely we were sinful at birth, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. But when we were washed, we were sanctified, we were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
my loving Father, there you took me to be henceforth your child and heir. My faithful Savior, there you let me the fruit of all your sorrow share. O Holy Spirit, comfort me when threatening clouds around I see. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. My faithful God, you fail me never. Your promise surely will endure. Oh, cast me not away forever, if words and deeds become impure. Have mercy when I come defiled. Forgive, lift up, restore your child. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, that I am and love most dearly, receive it all, O Lord, from me. Let me confess my faith sincerely, and help me your own child to be. Let nothing that I am or own serve any will but yours alone. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ, faithful in our calling as your children, and make us heirs with him of everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson for this weekend when we focus on worship comes from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is God's word. Alleluia, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia. 
The gospel recorded for today is from Mark chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. Glory be to you, O Lord. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. We hear the hymn of the day. for our sermon consideration today comes from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 19. We hear these words of God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, 
not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is God's word. Dear Jesus, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. 98 years, 10 months, and about 6 days. Now, I'm not talking about the age of one of our oldest members in the congregation, although we have three that are right around that age. But 98 years, 10 months, and a handful of days, that's how old St. Paul's Lutheran Church in North Mankato is. St. Paul's was formed on March 3rd of 1922, so in just a little more than a year, our congregation will be 100 years old. And now, these four weeks where we focus on our mission are not our anniversary celebration, but it's going to feel a little bit like a taste of that. How has the mission of the church been carried out at St. Paul's for the last almost 100 years? How, by God's grace, might it continue to be carried out in Lower North Mankato and beyond for, with God's blessing, the next 100 years? Now, uh, this church has has done all kinds of different things in the last 100 years. There's, There's a lot that has changed. I was reading through the 50th anniversary book that was compiled over this last week, and our first three years of ministry, we offered a German service, We don't have services in German here at St. Paul's anymore. In some of our our first worship services we had, they weren't right at this location. And you know, maybe the the church building is still over there, and I think it's Range and Wheeler, is that right? Or the building is there, the parsonage is right next door. But even before that, 98 years ago, they were meeting in a fire station just down the road on Belgrade as Christians got together to see how they could gather around God's word and share that word with their community. And now, almost 100 years later, maybe surprisingly, not a lot has changed. We still gather around God's word and his sacraments. We still baptize adults and infants into the family of God. We still believe that every single word that God has spoken in his Bible is true. Thank God for that. That was the prayer over and over in those pages of the 50th anniversary book. May God keep us faithful. And by God's grace, he has. Pastors have come and go, some staying a long time, some here just for a short time. Uh, We've had professors from Bethany Lutheran College helping out over the last 100 years during vacancies and things like that as guest preachers. So uh, some things don't change, some things do change. But the mission God gave his church in 98 years hasn't changed. How we carry out that mission will necessarily change because we're dealing with a different culture than was here 98 years ago. Different kinds of people coming from different kinds of backgrounds. So how we carry out that mission may very well change. How we talk about the mission, what kinds of words we use absolutely is going to change, and that's okay, but the mission Jesus gave his people to do, their marching orders as they go out into the world, that hasn't changed because God's word hasn't changed. And that's what we'll do these next four weeks. We'll look at what God has told us to gather together and do, reflect on some of the joys of doing that over the last 98 years and 10 months, and do a little bit of dreaming about how God might choose to bless us in these next years, especially how how he might bless us as we potentially pay off the mortgage for this building so that we can continue to do even more ministry here. What kinds of strategies might we use? What might we do to accomplish this mission? Now, the first aspect of the mission of the church that we'll talk about has to do with a pretty basic concept. If you were going to ask even a non-Christian person, what do church people do? They'd probably say, well, church people go to church. All right. And that's true. We do. We come together and worship 
usually on a weekly basis, getting filled up with God's word and his sacraments to give us power and strength to get out there in, into, the, into the trenches again, fueled up by God's word, encouraged by his people. But there's more to being a church member than that. There's more to being a Christian than that. Next week, we'll look at Christian education, the learn aspect of our, our ministry, worship and learn and all the wonderful ways God has blessed us for where we can gather around God's word through the educational entities that we have in our congregation and through our congregation and personally studying his word. Jesus also calls us to reach out to a world that's dying with a message of hope. How do we do that when people are so different from us out there? How can we show unconditional love? We'll talk about that. We'll see what God's word has to say. And finally, uh, this aspect of, of giving back. Jesus has given us so much. How do we say thank you to him with our time, our talents, and even our treasures? The mission of the church. Jesus gave that mission to the church before he went to heaven. Uh, a familiar verse, one of my favorites. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey or hold on to everything that I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Go and share and teach and grow, Jesus tells us. Worship gives us the power to carry out that mission. So today we're focusing on a section of God's word from Hebrews chapter 10 that is, is maybe a familiar chapter thinking about worship and encouraging us in our relationship with God, our relationships with people out in the world, and the, the believer's relationship with his or her church. We see that in this section of Hebrews. First of all, the, the, uh, the author to Hebrews, we don't know for sure who wrote this letter, but we know that it is God's word. He talks about worship. Only he doesn't just go back 98 years and 10 months and 6 days. He talks about worship Beef. Well, no, I suppose he would be because that was still going on when he wrote this. But he talks about worship with the sacrificial system, the Old Testament worship life of the church, 2,000 plus years ago for us. And he makes these connections. And even then, things had changed for him and for God's people. He says, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. It's this new and living way opened up for us through the curtain that is his body. So he goes back to the time of worshiping God in the tabernacle or in the temple where there were different rooms that had different levels of security clearance to be able to get into them. And the innermost room was the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant would have stood until it was carried away and lost and where the great high priest would have come in only one time a year and only with the blood of a lifeless sacrifice that was killed because the wages of sin is death and the blood of the innocent sprinkled over the Ark of the Covenant for the, this picture of the forgiveness of sins of God's people. So he said there was a great high priest who did that because no one else was able to go through that curtain because our sins had separated us from God so much that the Old Testament people, no one could go in there of their own volition or they would die. Because holiness, God's presence, is incompatible with sinfulness. So once a year, the high priest came in with the blood of the sacrifice. And that continued for, for years and years and years until the one sacrifice came, until the perfect sacrifice came, until the great high priest came to offer a greater sacrifice than the blood of bulls and goats to totally open up what worship is and how it works. No longer is it just one person who can come in one time a year, but Jesus symbolically entered the most holy place with his own blood. When he died as a sacrifice on the cross, when he took every one of our sins to the cross and bled and died for them and covered every sin, and now the writer of the Hebrews says, Here's what this worship is like now. Now, instead of fear to be in God's presence, we have confidence to enter the most holy place because the blood of Jesus has already entered. We have a new and a living way opened. It's, it's not, there's, no more, um, there's no more roadblock on the way to heaven. Jesus has opened that up. We have a great high priest 
over the house of God. And this high priest didn't just go up to heaven to sit on a rocking chair and watch how things go for us like he's watching a reality TV show. Instead, this great high priest actively watches over us, hearing our prayers and bringing them to God along with the Holy Spirit, mediating for us as as we sin. He says, no, I've paid for that sin. I died for that sin. I've brought my, my blood. I've been sacrificed for each of those sins already. Our great high priest is there for us, so now we can draw near to God. As we worship, we think about the believer's relationship with God. And we know that through Jesus, it is a good relationship. It's a relationship that is forgiven, holy and blameless in his sight. We see that through baptism, through the Lord's Supper, where once again we have his blood shed for us, given for us, for our forgiveness. So let us draw near to God with this full assurance that faith brings because our hearts have been sprinkled. We've been cleansed of a guilty conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. Another reference that makes me think of baptism. Bodies washed with the pure water and word to show that we are members of God's family and we can come to him with confidence. So then there's another relationship here, the relationship between believers and the world. Paul, in, or not Paul, but the writer of the Hebrews encourages us, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Hold on to the hope that Jesus gives us, and one way we do that is by gathering together in worship by studying God's word, by sharing that word. As we're in contact with his word and his promise and his sacraments, it helps us hold on without swerving as much. You think of the the new believer who's all of a sudden confronted with uh, with, um, a challenge to their faith and maybe, oh, it just pushes them back and they're, they're concerned about it. And they start to swerve a little bit. Is this really true? Could this really be true? You think of the believer who's been a believer for quite some time, who still reels a little bit when maybe an accusation comes up, their guilty conscience flares up and wonders, can this really be true? The writer of the Hebrews tells us, hold on. Keep meeting together so that you don't have to swerve back and forth as much. That's what the Christian life is. There's going to be some swerving. There's going to be ups and downs like the new teenage driver. Maybe some some of you have taught your teenagers to drive already. And in the beginning, maybe a little bit of swerving, but over time, less and more confidence. And that's what we have too as we gather together in worship. Confidence of where we stand with our God and confidence as we share that relationship with others. Because the writer says that we hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Not just a hope we bottle up inside for ourselves, although that is helpful in this Christian life, just to have this hope for ourselves. But it's a hope we profess, a hope that we share so that we can reach out. More on that in a couple weeks when we get to the reach out section of the mission of the church. And then finally, this encouragement, this relationship between the believer and the church, this encouragement to stay connected to God's word and God's people. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. God's people at that time lived in a dangerous time where they were persecuted for their faith when it was possible that they could lose their jobs, where they could be killed for professing to be a believer, and people were starting to back away from meeting together. And the writer to the Hebrews says, do not do that. Don't put the word of God down. Don't stop gathering with one another. Don't stop worshiping. If you would keep on reading here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and following, just one of the the most frightening pronouncements of law comes up. It says, Jesus is the only sacrifice for sin. And if you 
lose hold of that sacrifice, if you don't want that sacrifice for sin, there's no other sacrifice. The only thing to expect at that point is burning fire. So we don't want to let go of what we have. And there's no reason we need to let go of what we have. We have the high priest who has washed us and made us pure and made us part of his family so that we can proclaim his word to each other and to others. That's what we do, encouraging one another. This word for encouraging one another is a word that also gets used in the New Testament for the work of the Holy Spirit. Standing by our side, building us up when we're down, helping us when we need, when we need the things that only he can give. When we're weak, when we're sorrowing, when we're tempted. And brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what we can do for each other too. We're in a, a really strange time in our life right now where, where for some it's very difficult, for some it's imp impossible to at this moment be able to gather together and stand right next to the side of another person. But we're getting closer. And the encouragement from the writer to the Hebrews is don't get into a habit of staying away from God's people. Now, at this time, we may have to be watching online for a time, but don't let, don't let that become the norm forever. As soon as we can, let's get back together. And it's so, such a joy being able to see you and worship here with you. Worship, sometimes we may think of that as, as the, the praises that we sing, the words that we speak, the prayers that we bring to God, and that's true. That's part of worship. But worship especially, and we see it on a day like the baptism of our Lord, worship is primarily God coming down and serving us, fueling us up, building us up with his forgiveness proclaimed in the absolution at the beginning of a service, in his forgiveness tasted and seen in the supper, in his forgiveness felt in the washing with water and the word of baptism. We gather together because God comes to us, and then we respond with thanksgiving. We profess that hope and pray to him. And so we gather together, and so we reach out to other friends and other congregation members to encourage them to stay connected to God and his word in one way or another. I saw, I think it was a Facebook meme or something like that in the last week or so, giving an illustration of how good it is for believers to be gathered together, encouraging each other. And it was about a pastor going to the house of a man who hadn't been in worship for a long time. And the story goes that he came and knocked on the door, and the man opened the door and saw his pastor and immediately realized, oh, okay, it's that lecture, it's that talk. All right, well, come on in. And the pastor comes in and doesn't really say anything. And they go into the living room together. And he has a wood-burning fire with a bunch of logs on it going there. And sits down, takes off his coat, and they just sit in silence for a time. Until eventually the pastor gets up and takes the, the tongs next to the fire and goes and grabs one of the logs of wood and takes it and moves it to the side off by itself in the ashes away from the rest of the burning fire and then sits back down. They just sit there in silence for a while longer until eventually that one log starts to fizzle out and stops burning. And there it sits, all by itself, cold. And then the pastor gets up again and goes back to the fireplace and picks up that one log and puts it right back with the others and almost immediately it fans into flame and starts burning again, and then he picks up his coat and makes his way to the door. At which point, the, the man goes over and opens the door for him and says, thank you, Pastor. I understand. I'll see you in church this weekend. <laughs> Would it go like that? I, I don't know. But, but if I don't see you here for a long time and I don't know that you're staying connected online, I hope that I can knock on your door and you'll have me and you'll, we'll be able to sit in the living room together and, and, and if you don't have the fireplace going, then we'll just talk about it and it'll be okay because we love each other and we love God's word and we want to be together. Because when we're together, gathered around the word, we encourage each other and fan that, that gift of faith into flames to prepare us for the mission 
that God has called us to do. God wants us to worship, and I'm confident that we'll be able to continue worshiping, and we'll get more and more back to normal soon. Uh, For 98 years, God has allowed us to worship here in this area together, and with God's blessings, we'd like to worship for another 100 years, to prepare ourselves for the next 100 years of ministry together. What will that look like? Are we going to be singing the same songs? I have a feeling some of them we will. Will we be singing some different songs? Probably. Will we be using all the same Bible translations? Maybe, maybe not, probably not. Will we be rooted in God's word and always going back to the original languages? I hope so. The prayer over those 50 years in the anniversary book was always keep us true to your word, faithful with your word and sacraments, and that will always be our prayer here at St. Paul's too. Lutherans gathering together around the means of grace, rejoicing in that sacrifice for sins, infants, children, and adults being baptized with water and the word for forgiveness, confirmed members gathering together around the wafer and the wine for strength and forgiveness. We gather every week so that we can get recharged, so that we can get energized to get out there and carry out Christ's mission. For the next week, for the next year, And if God wills it, for the next 100 years. Amen. At this time, I'd invite you to please rise. We have a special remembrance of baptism response that will say responsive, sibly, (laughs) sibly. Holy baptism is the precious means of grace by which our Father in heaven connects us with Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. In holy baptism, God takes away our sins and gives us new life in Christ our Lord. He creates new sons and daughters, born again by water and the Spirit. We are made members of the body of Christ. Living in fellowship with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We solemnly renounce the devil and all his works and ways. Let us confess the gift of faith in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us, therefore, reaffirm the promises our Lord made to us in our baptism. So I ask you, do you reject the devil along with his lies and empty promises? Yes, Yes, and I ask God to help me. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you intend to continue in this faith? to be diligent in the use of word and sacrament in faith and action, remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as long as you live? Yes, Yes. and I ask God to help me. You may be seated. This is the time we usually do our offering, one of the ways we give back to the Lord. We have our offering plates in the back as you as you enter or as you exit. We also have connection cards inside of the worship folder. I'd just love it if you could fill out one of those so we can have a record of your visit. Um, and then if you're watching online to fill out the online connection card at St. Paul's North Mankato.com on the in-person worship area, then, then we know who's staying connected and can work on following up with those whose, whose faith may be dwindling so we can check in and see how they're doing. Also, for guests, uh, a way for us to thank you for worshiping with us 
And then everybody, you can check out our guest table in the back. We have some Bibles you can take and share with a friend or take for yourself, too. Uh, At this time, we're going to do something special in this service where we're going to install the next 100 uh, funding appeal leadership team. So I'll give you a little bit of information about that. Like I said, toward the end of the month, beginning of next month, we're preparing for a special funding appeal where we've taken our, our mortgage payment and removed it from our budget. And if God, if God blesses this, and he will how he sees fit, we'd like to be able to have a special kind of an over and above push to be able to pay off our mortgage so we can just get that done and not, not have to worry about it and focus on other kinds of ministry. So uh, none of this will be a, a strong arm kind of a thing uh, to, to try and get people to give, 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 but an opportunity to say, what can we do together uh, to be able to make this happen? So we have uh, members that we're gathering together to help with this special appeal. Uh, we have some fun pictures in the back that are being worked on by, um, by one of our teams. Uh, we have other people who are going to be making encouraging phone calls and making sure people have the information they need. So if you'd like to join and help out with this after the service, please talk to anyone who comes up. But at this point, I'd like to invite the the next 100 leadership team to come forward as we install them for the work they're about to do this month. So come right up here to the front. You can probably just come in front of the... Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Congregation, I'll be asking you some questions too, so pay attention. I'll always give you the answer. (laughs) The Lord has given us important work to do as his children. He directs us to train our young people in the nurture of the Lord. He tells us to conduct worship services, hold Bible classes, and strengthen Christian friendships. He sends us out into our community and world to share God's love with the world around us. Not only has the Lord given this important work to do, he also empowers us to carry out his will. First, he brings us into his family of believers through the suffering, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. He sends the Holy Spirit into our hearts with the gift of saving faith. And he doesn't stop there. He motivates us to daily serve him with our time, treasures and talents. What a gracious God we have. For almost 100 years, the Lord has led a group of Christians. Almost 100 years ago, the Lord led a group of Christians to start a church here in North Mankato, a church we now call home. Over the years, countless people have heard God's word here at St. Paul's, and for that we are thankful. In the coming weeks, we will be encouraged to generously give so we can pay off our church mortgage, opening the door to expanding our ministry. It's an exciting time at St. Paul's, and with God's blessing, we can pay off our mortgage as we take our next steps into our congregation's history. Congregation, I'd invite you to please stand if you're able. Members of the body of Christ, we are called to hear, celebrate, and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together we grow in God's word, we gather in Christian love and fellowship, and we go preach the good news to glorify God. Our mission field is right outside the doors of our church and the doors of our homes. As those first disciples were called, so too we are called to witness to the good news of salvation. Do you now reaffirm that mission as true and vital for our congregation, If so, all of you answer, yes, we reaffirm that mission. Yes, Yes, we reaffirm that mission. People of God, the men and women standing before you have agreed to lead this special offering. Will you accept these people as leaders in this task? Will you pray for their work and our work together? And will you respond to their leadership by accepting the challenge to growing in our giving? If so, answer, Yes, with the help of God. Yes, Yes, with the help of God. To you called to lead. As God has called others before you for the mission of the gospel, God now calls you. In Christ, we are a community of faith. We will stand with you. 
We will respond to your leadership. Will you now accept this leadership role and begin our special celebration? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you challenge us, encourage us to give of ourselves and be faithful to the mission of the gospel? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Let us pray. O God of love, as we seek to respond to your call, speak to us and guide us. Lead us now as we treasure what you have given us. Sustain our hope and our joy in giving, so that, in, so that your light may shine in our world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. In our prayer of the church today, we have a responsive prayer that's printed on page 8. And we also include in our prayers today the mother of Lori Esch, well, we, we pray for the family of the mother of Lori Esch Taylor and Vicki Abraham, Artis Esch, who was called home to her Savior Jesus in death. And we ask for comfort and strength for those who are left behind and joy in knowing that she is with her Savior in heaven. We begin with the prayer of the church as printed on page 8. Lord Jesus, at your baptism, you revealed yourself as the obedient Son of Man, fulfilling all righteousness. Your Heavenly Father revealed you as his beloved Son, in whom he is well pleased. The Holy Spirit revealed you as the Christ, the anointed and armed to destroy the work of the devil. We thank you, beloved Son of God, that you took on yourself the nature of a servant became like us, and were obedient to the will of your heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, eternal word of God, you have connected your mighty word and gracious promises to the water of holy baptism. In baptism, you cleansed us from sin, redeemed us from death, and clothed us in your perfect righteousness. We praise you for the promise, your promise, and treasure of baptism. Encourage us to remember our baptisms daily as we die to sin and rise to new life with you. O Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you have blessed our fellow believer, Artis Ash, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought her to the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort her family, and all who mourn her death with your precious promises, and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest, and at last, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us to number our days aright so that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved. Through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. Amen. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you. 
for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. This is one of our wonder, wonderful aspects of worship where we come together to get filled up with God's word and his sacrament. It is also a very special unifying meal uh, that Christians who believe the same things together join in together. So we invite those who are members of our congregation of a Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran congregation or Evangelical Lutheran congregation to come and join us today. We'll, the ushers will dismiss people from each side and have one family unit at a time, unless you have a large family unit. You could probably take the whole, the whole area at a time. But in general, a family unit per table. Come up all together. I'll invite you to take and eat, take and drink, and then you can uh, head out to the outsides and back to your seats, placing the cup and the paper plate in the baskets on the edge. All things are prepared. Come forward. To Jordan's river came our Lord, the Christ whom heavenly hosts adored. The God from God, the light from light, the Lord of glory, power, and might. The Savior came to be baptized, the Son of God in flesh disguised to stand beneath the Father's will and all his promises fulfilled. As Jesus in the Jordan stood and John baptized the Lamb of God, the Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, Descended on him from above. The Father's word, the Spirit's flight, anointed Christ in glorious light. As God's own choice from Adam's fall to save the world and free us all. The Father's word, the Spirit's flight, anointed Christ in glorious sight. As God's own choice from Adam's fall to save the world and free us all. Now rise, faint hearts, be resolute. This man is Christ, our substitute. He was baptized in Jordan's stream, proclaimed Redeemer, Lord Supreme.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and your minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Well, thank you for coming here to worship the Lord today. Thank you for watching online, those who are doing so. May God bless all of you this week. I have, let's see, I have an announcement for sure. Um, I'm sure I really hope you heard last week that Pastor Andy Schmidt has joined us as our lead pastor. We read his letter last time. Give him a, well, don't give him a big hug yet, but wave at him from six feet away and... <laughs> And thank him for his willingness to come and serve here. Also good news from Miss Meredith Milbrath, our teacher at Risen Savior Lutheran School. She writes, dear, she, she had a call to Abiding Peace Academy. And she writes, dear St. Mark and St. Paul's members, over the last few weeks, God has given me the chance to deliberate and reflect on how I can best serve him in my public ministry. I've enjoyed learning about a possible new ministry at Abiding Peace 
while taking all the, while at the same time talking about my ministry here at Risen Savior. During this deliberation, my confirmation verse has been at the forefront of my mind, reminding me that God will be with me in whatever path I choose. Isaiah 30, verse 21, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This being said, and after much, much deliberation, the Lord has led me to return the call to Abiding Peace Academy. I'm excited to continue my ministry here at Risen Savior. I ask that at this time you keep Abiding Peace Academy in your prayers as they will be in mine. I pray for the Lord's blessings and guidance on the faculty, staff, and students, both at Abiding Peace Academy and Risen Savior Lutheran School as we continue to serve the Lord together. May the name of the Lord be praised, your servant in Christ, Meredith. Milbrath. So I think, I think those are my only announcements. Do stop and check out some of the, the signage we have, some aspects of worship over the last hundred years in pictures over there. Uh, some of these pictures we'll be putting up over the next few weeks. Some will be showing up online too. Some of them we, we don't necessarily know what was going on in all of the pictures. So if you know a story that connects with that, stop and talk with us about it because we'd like to learn more. And as we get ready for our 100-year celebration, we'll, we'll have a lot more of this. But let's have some fun together. God be with you.